What does sidechain compression do? Well, simply it turns into something like this. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. This is Core Gadget and in this episode we're going to have a deeper look at sidechain compression, what it does and how to set it up. Now I recently started making a series called Korg Gadget Production Tricks in where I'm breaking down a drum and bass track that I've made inside Gadget showing you each of the channels what the insert effect slots contain and the way I've tweaked the sounds of each gadget to make that track sound the way it does. I've had many questions about the side chaining and why I'm working the way I do. I've got two London gadgets loaded on two channels and you'll understand the purpose of that very soon. I've also got a a Wolfsburg gadget loaded right here and all it is doing is playing a simple chord progression. I'm gonna go into the insert effect slots and make sure that the sidechain I've already got there is turned off. So we've got nothing affecting the Wolfsburg gadget. So to the first point, what does sidechain compression do? Well simply it turns into something that sounds like this, depending on how you set it up, of course. So you can hear something definitely happening with the volume. Now let's go into the insert effect slots and open up the sidechain compressor. You can view the sidechain compressor as a compressor that needs input to know when to compress. You feed that input in various ways, depending on what type of sidechain compressor plug you're using. We're using Gadget and Gadget's sidechain compressor listens to specific channels. Now since we only have three channels loaded here, we only get three channels inside the track list. So we can choose either of these for the sidechain to listen to. So here I've got track three chosen and that means the sidechain compression listens to the third channel and it's got a London gadget loaded with a very very simple drum pattern. So each time the drum hits it sends out an audio signal and that signal gets fed into the sidechain compressor. So when the bass drum hits, the compressor starts working. By using sidechain compression technique, you can then give space to other elements that needs to be louder at certain points in a track. It's also a great way of making your stuff pump. You've probably heard it in popular EDM music. Now this is the way I'm using the sidechain compression in my drum and bass track that I'm breaking down inside my Core Gadget production tricks series. And so some viewers were asking me why are you using two instances of London keeping one muted with only the bass drum in it? Why don't you just go and use the full drum track and just filter off the top? Yes you can do it like that. So let's mute this one and let's have a look at the sidechain compressor here. Right here we have a high cut filter. This way we can filter off the high frequencies leaving only the bass frequencies for the sidechain to listen to. But you do have a problem with that. I'm gonna back out of the insert effect slot, mute the Wolfsburg gadget and let's have a listen to the full drum track. Now there's a lot of stuff going on there. Got a bit of a quirky sound there. It sounds kind of far. Either way, to demonstrate this, I'll unmute the Wolfsburg gadget, mute the London gadget, go into the insert effect slot, open up the sidechain, and then tell the sidechain to listen to the first track. There's a different compression going on here. Let me choose back to this one and you'll hear it only compress when the bass drum hits. Mm -hmm. 
But then you're thinking, Jacob, you haven't filtered anything off. I'm going to play this and pull this down and you'll hear when the sidechain compression starts compressing the same way that this channel allows it to do. When we cut off all the frequencies all the way down to 47 Hz, we're getting the same type of compression as if the sidechain channel were listening to this London gadget only. Now many would say, well that's good then, then you don't need the extra channel. Yeah, well sometimes I use other types of drums, drums that don't have that much low end in them when it comes to the kick drum. And sometimes I might throw in bongos or some other bass heavy percussion elements and then the sidechain compression goes haywire again. So doing it like this, by me copying the bass drums only and putting them in its own gadget and muting it and telling the sidechain to listen to it, I'm ensuring myself that I won't have any problems further in my project. I don't want to deal with this later on. When you worked a long time with a project, rearranging stuff sometimes just because you made a mistake at the beginning, uh, it can mess up a whole session. So it's up to you. Either way, I hope you understand sidechain compression, why I choose to work the way I do, and how to set it up yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. I also have a Patreon page, so if you want to support me in that way, you can see the address right here, and you can also find it down in the description, together with an app link for Core Gadget, and other links to resource sites for iOS musicians, and also links to places where you can find yours truly, social networks, and that kind of stuff. As usual, I wish you a very productive week now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it